Welcome back to Virtual School Assembly. Today our guest is Marcus Morrison. Marcus has been playing professional basketball for 12 years in everywhere, actually. So he's played in the US, he's played in Japan, he's played in Chile, Israel, Iraq, Qatar, Mexico. Uh, and so he is keeping super busy as an international basketball player. Um, he also runs on time entities with his brother. That's an AAU program for 12 and under uh, basketball. And so uh, we're so excited to have him onto the show today. Uh, thanks for being here, Marcus. Thank you, no problem. Thanks for having me. Well, I'm, I'm really excited to hear about, you know, playing around the world, but let's start back in the beginning. Uh, tell us a little bit about your story, where you're from, where you grew up, um, uh, where you played basketball for, high school, college, stuff like that. Um, I started off playing at a very young age. Uh, my dad was a, a, he was a recreation supervisor. So I, I stayed at the gym pretty much year round. So I started playing like organized at the age of four, I, like scored wow. my first points at four. So I kind of was playing like basketball was, you know, was everything for me. So I played anytime I could. I played in middle school all the way through high school. You know, I would play organized. I would play unorganized. I would just play all, all day, all, you know, year round. So um, I went to Lakewood High School in St. Petersburg, Florida. Uh, my senior year, we won the state championship. Uh, my freshman, I graduated and went on to the University of South Carolina. Um, I transferred after one year and went um, to a junior college in Kansas, Garden City, Kansas, was a, um, which was a great uh, school and a great basketball conference. Uh, after that, I transferred. Um, after I graduated from, you know, the junior college, I transferred to Middle Tennessee State where I finished out my last two years and uh, began playing professionally the year after that. And it's, you know, that's where well, the journey started. Well, let's talk about college for a minute. So typically when you're transferring in college, it's for better opportunities as far as playing time or a better fit in the, the system and things like that. But it's never an easy thing to move across the country, especially if you're from Florida, going to a place like Kansas, um, you know, first South Carolina, then Kansas, and, and then back to Tennessee. Uh, walk us through that a little bit. What were some of the challenges of just – moving uh, during your college career and, and starting over in some ways. Um, what was that like for you? Um, it kind of, you know, not knowingly, it kind of shaped me to, to prepare me kind of to be for the pro professional life, um, you know, moving around a lot. I mean, I didn't know it at the time, um, but, you know, it was kind of challenging, you know, going from a, a really big school, you know, SEC school, University of South Carolina and going to a, a town where the you know <laughs> I had more people at the school than there's at the town you know right. so um, that was a big adjustment but you know and also I went from the young and mature guy on the team to actually having to be the older you know more mature guy in one year so you know that helped me um, grow up a little faster and um, you know the movement was tough but I mean I got to I, I like it because I got to know people in in our, all the whole part of the country I know people everywhere now so. Cool. It was tough, but it had its advantages. Yeah, well, so let's talk about then from college to the pros. Where's the first place that you played professionally? My first place I played professionally was Israel. It was my first year out um, Israel. I was living in um, Leva Sharon. It was, non um, yeah, it was 30 minutes away from uh, Tel Aviv. It was a really nice place. Uh, my first experience overseas, and, um, you know, I, I loved it. I fell in love with it. And, um, I just decided, I was like, I, I want to do this for as long as possible. So I'm going to work as hard as I can, stay in the gym, get to, to the gym early, stay in the gym late, and just give it my all. Right. Now, when you moved to Israel, I'm sure there was a little bit of culture shock, even though your teammates would speak English and, and things like that. What were some of the unexpected things that happened once you moved out of the U.S.? Uh, yeah, it was, it was really different, you know, um, I, I got lucky because Israel, you know, a lot of people speak English. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of an Americanized place. And um, it was it was it was a little different because, you know, just their their temperaments and their, you know, their 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 when they're speaking their Hebrew, it seems like they're hostile. It seems like they're arguing, but they're really just <laughs> talking, you know, <laughs> you know, so, you know, it's just, you know, it was, it's kind of a, a hostile area, if you know what I mean. They're surrounded by their enemies. So. You know, everyone there has to go to the military. The whole 
if you once you leave high school, you have to go to the military, girl or boy. Right. Um, it's, you know, it was kind of a, it was different, but they were, it was I learned a lot. You know, they're very family oriented. They always have um, dinner with the whole family on Fridays. You know, they I've got invited to different players' house. You know, it was it was really cool. That's cool. Uh, as you so you've been to several different countries to play. Uh, do you have a favorite place that you've played, or or maybe a few favorite places where maybe it was unexpected? You didn't think you'd like that that part of the world as much as you did. Um, it, Israel definitely was one one of my favorites. You know, uh, I definitely love that. Um, I would say Tokyo, Japan was a really nice place to be. Uh, you know, it's, it's, they got everything, everything you can uh, think of there. Um, I would say uh, Mexico as well. Um, I learned a lot about, you know, Mexican culture. Um, that's that's kind of where I spent more, more of my time. Most of my career, I played in pretty much all the leagues out there. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I learned a lot about, you know, just the, the Mexican culture. Right. Now, and you've had a lot of success down in Mexico. I know that you had back-to-back -back, uh, Copa, I can't remember what it's called, but the, yeah, in, in their Copa. league yeah. you've won. Um, mm. Tell a little bit about that. Is that kind of the highlight of your professional career, or, or what other big things have you done as a pro that are kind of your highlights? Uh, that was definitely the uh, what, a highlight for me, you know, the, the highlight for me because I'm a, I'm a team-oriented guy. Mm -hmm. uh, to to win it to win the championship and then to to win it again the next year was it was it was really hard you know it was really tough and especially the kind of season it is it's not an easy season it's a four game a week season so um, you know for four months so that's it's kind of tough on the body um, and and the mental you know you're traveling a lot it's not you're not always in the best uh, hotels it was kind of a like a grind but. To see the, the the fans and to see the team and see the city come alive for basketball, it, it, it was a fulfilling feeling at the end. That's really cool. Um, so it, it's interesting right now as a world, you know, we're, we're living in a time of uncertainty. So much has happened just in these last couple months. And a lot of kids are, are really worried about their future. They don't know what next year is going to be like. They don't know what the new normal is going to be, right? They've been mm -hmm. cool online and things like that. Well, for the last decade of your life, there's been a ton of uncertainty. You didn't know where you'd be from year to year, uh, but you've made it work and you've, you've kept busy living your dream, playing professional basketball. Uh, what advice would you give to kids out there that are worried about the future and just don't know what to expect or, or how to get through? Uh, I would say, you know, uh, just, you know, take, you can't worry about things that you can't change, you know, just worry about what you can do you know, work on yourself every day, get better as a person every day. Get, and, um, you know, I would say if you want to, if you're playing something or if you're pursuing something, just be the best at it or just be the best at one aspect in it. If you're the best at, at something, you'll always have work. You'll always be doing something. And, you know, just chase your dreams, find out what you love and, and do that and do it, do it the best you can. That's cool. That's great advice. Um, as, as you've lived over this last 10, 12 years um, playing basketball professionally, um, I'm sure you've had a lot of surprises and, and also a lot of struggles. Can you talk about one or two things that were, have been really difficult for you and what you've done to kind of overcome those challenges and obstacles? Uh, you know, the being away from your family, um, traveling a lot is, is the difficult part. Not having a, a real soft line, uh, um, it's hard to have a home base when you're you're gone 10, you know, nine, 10 months out of the year. And, and you know, you're moving around here back and forth. Um, you know, my, my career wasn't uh, the typical basketball. You know, I wouldn't sign the, the nine month contracts. I would sign four month contracts, five month contracts, six month contracts. And, you know, I would be going back and forth. So that was kind of tough. Um, not seeing your family as much as you would like, it's, it's tough, but you know, you have to understand that you're chasing a bigger goal. You're, chasing a bigger dream and just not with basketball basketball has brought me into contact with a lot of people that I probably would have never met or you know never bumped shoulders with if it wasn't for the game so um I would just say find your passion and just do it oh well so one of those groups of people that you come in contact is I know you run this um AAU program with your brother do you want to talk a little bit about that who you're working with and what you guys are doing there um, really, we, you know, we started off, um, 
before we were doing uh, music and entertainment. And uh, my brother, he, him, and my other friend, they they decided to um, enter a team in a, in the local league. Um, but that went from two, three years later to having the you know the best twelve and under team in the in the country, and and really trying to have a shot to win nationals. Um, nobody ever from our you know from our city or from our area has ever won a national, to my recollection. You know right. that's. That's kind of a big deal. And um, this year, I think they really have a chance to do it. And, um, you know, it's, it's really a positive effect on the community. They, they're really taking, you know, kids from the inner city and, you know, showing them that they can really be something and give them this confidence. And, and, and they're great coaches, you know, and we just keep the whole, you know, we're trying to keep the whole organization, keep the whole brand, getting it bigger and bigger. Um, I want to say we have uh, 10 and under now. 11 and under now, but the, the 12 and under is the main focus right now. Right. So you're working with a lot of kids and, and a lot of moving parts with that. Um, what do you think about coaching moving forward? Are you looking at coaching when your professional career is over or, or have you given much thought to that? Um, yes, I definitely want to uh, pursue coaching. That's the next, that's the next step for me. I think I have about a good one or two more seasons in me to, you know, play, finish it out, maybe chase another championship. But after that, yeah, I definitely want to um, definitely want to get into coaching and probably, you know, training, training as well, individual training, and, you know, and workouts. Uh, um, we do we already do a summer camp, which we've done three summer camps. This will be the fourth one this this summer, uh, you know, for the whole the whole city um, youth ages from seven to, to 17. It's um, a, like a weekend camp we've done, elevation, LTE elevation camp. So um, I definitely love coaching. I definitely love teaching. And that's definitely my next steps. Cool. That sounds great. Now, our world is a little crazy right now, and justifiably so with the whole Black Lives uh, Matter movement. And I think one of the things that we really are looking towards uh, as students in school or at home, I guess, uh, is what can we be doing right now to be more understanding of other cultures and, and people who maybe have a different upbringing than us and, and things like that. So what advice would you give to kids out there? Obviously, you've traveled the world, so you've been exposed to a lot of different cultures, a lot of different races. You've seen a lot of inequities and prejudices throughout the world. Uh, do you have just some general advice to kids on, on what they can do to make the world a better place? Um, just, just understand and spread the word that, you know, people are people at the end of the day, you know, um, there's someone like you 2000 miles away across the, across the globe that's doing the same thing as you, you know, they're just, they're doing this and they like to read, they like to, you know, they like to play video games. They like to watch cartoons. It's the same thing. People are people. And, um, you know, once, if, if you don't understand somebody or, you know, or a culture, you just have to. You know, do your research, dig around, find out a little bit before you pre prejudge and be prejudiced. But um, I'll just say just we're all the same. People are people, and we're all doing the same things, trying to be better, trying to, you know, be great for our families and make our families proud. Wise words. Well, Marcus, really appreciate you coming on the show today. Um, if kids want to follow your career or want to connect with you in, in some way, is there a place where they can do that online? Are any social profiles or anything like that? Yes, um, I have a, a basketball page uh, for on Instagram. It's uh, Mexico Mo, M E X I C uh, Mexico dot M O. And uh, yeah, I post a lot of highlights. I post a lot of videos there. Um, yeah. Cool. We'll link that up in the description. Thank you so much for coming on today.